31-23, Georgetown leading Missouri at halftime. And we would like to salute Kurt Gowdy, the president of the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame, has announced the inductees for 1982. And congratulations to these men who have contributed so strongly to the college and professional basketball program. Willis Reed, a great star at Grambling. Congratulations. Frank Ramsey, that sixth man in the pro ranks, but a Kentucky Wildcat All-American. Slater Martin, an All-American at the University of Texas and with the old Minneapolis Lakers. Hal Greer, another All-American. Marshall University who carried his strength into the pro ranks. Alvin Doerr, a contributor to this great game, director of the NAIA. Clarence Big House Gaines, the winningest coach in college basketball. 682 wins for Big House. And the late Everett Case, who went from Indiana down south, brought big time basketball to the Atlantic Coast Conference. Congratulations to those outstanding gentlemen, the newest members announced today to the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame. College basketball is being brought to you by the Miller Brewing Company, Brewers of Miller High Life. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. By Texaco, who also brings you quality automotive products you can trust. By Emory Worldwide, when you're shipping ounces to tons, you ask for the Emory Edge. And by Honeywell, you should see what we do with computers. clear and head walls clear. I guess it's Miller time. Last one down by. Right. Miller time. Time for the best tasting beer you can find. Miller High Life. When it's time to relax. What took you so long? One beer stands clear. Miller beer. If you got the time. We got the beer. Hey, come here. I want to show you something. No, it's not my early vaudeville friends, but the guys who worked on Texaco's first oil well almost 80 years ago. For the future, we'll need American oil more than ever before, so Texaco is now looking for oil in more than 21 states, participating in the drilling of almost four times more wildcat wells this year than last. At Texaco, we're using our energy to bring you more energy for the future. You can trust the star at home and in your car. In northwest Montana, up by Hungry Horse and Lone Pine, sits Whitefish. It's a long way to anywhere from Whitefish. So when the railroad needed computer equipment here, Honeywell was the choice. A Honeywell system may not need service often, Have a nice trip. but there's a Honeywell service engineer to come take care of it. Hey, how are you, Wayne? How you doing? Even in Whitefish. Honeywell, you should see what we do with computers. It's a car. It's a truck. It drives like a car. It hauls like a truck. It's a Rampage. America's first sports pickup. Front wheel drive, rack and pinion steering, electronically controlled engine, exceptional mileage, and the bonus of a double-walled all-steel cargo area that hauls over half a ton. You can go on a Rampage for just $66.98. Come in and order it now. It's a car. It's a truck. It's, it's a, a Rampage. A whole new kind of driving machine. Tom Jones joins the Mandrell. It's not unusual to, to be left. Then, whoops. <laughs> Lynn Redgrave and Mel tell us visit with Billy Crystal Saturday. Back at McDonough Arena on the campus of Georgetown University. It is a beautiful day in the nation's capital of this marvelous university located near the banks of the Potomac River. And the Hoyas are in a rather positive flow, 31-23. It's a team that, at the start of the year, everyone said had the potential to be a national champion, but maybe a year or two down the line. John Thompson with an outstanding recruiting year, but it could well be, if he gets in the tournament this year, that he's got the talent to go as far as his kids want to go. Yeah, he, he could see uh, uh, Basin Street, if possible. They, injury's got to stay away, and the freshmen come a long way. That freshman, uh, the three great freshmen on the baseline, he's mixed maturity with the, with the rookies. And they seem to have found themselves. In the first half, neither team shot well, both under 50%. And of course, the strength of these two teams all year has been holding the opposition down. Field goal percentage is around 41, 42%. And their defenses were outstanding 
in the first half today. Let's look at the conference standings as uh, John, oh, this is, oh, John Thompson and Norm Stewart talking to the officials in the first half. A ref, a coach never leaves the court until the other coach leaves the court at the end of the half. A lot of times they try to pigeonhole a referee, put some pressure on them. And they both stood there for a while, then they went to their respective locker rooms. The big thing in the statistics in this half has been turnovers. It's unbelievable that Missouri has 12 turnovers, but that's because of the up-tempo of the ball game and because of Georgetown's unbelievable defensive pressure. Individual scoring for Missouri, led by their scoring leader all season long, Ricky Frazier with 11. Of course, uh, Stepanovich has three fouls at key, scored only two points. And for Georgetown, led by Pat Ewing's 11, and Sleepy Floyd with eight. Surprisingly, Sleepy Floyd only hit three out of eight shots in the field. Same teams that started the game will reintroduce the players. Eric Smith looking for Ewing inside. There it is, Ewing against Stepanovich. And he's way short. Ball comes into the arms of Frazier. Prince Bridges to Sunbold. Rich is a great leaper. Stepanovich inside, past Ewing. Can't hit, Ewing rebounds. Sleepy Floyd the other way. Derek Smith, Hancock. Brown, and now everyone's touched the ball. Ewing over Stepanovich, almost threw it away. A great save by Hancock, and now he dribbles the ball on the baseline, out of bounds to Missouri. That was an unbelievable save by Hancock that time. You have to be an athlete to control that ball. Hancock is a senior, as is Floyd. Frazier, a senior, along with McCrary from Missouri. The ever-present pressure on defense by the Hoyas, constantly, never stopping, just looking for that one crack for the turn you over two, three times in a row and blow you out of here. They have the best press we've seen all year, do they not? No doubt about it. They go the whole 40 minutes with it. As I said earlier, their defense is their offense. Georgetown leading 31-23, no scoring thus far. Early moments of the second half in Georgetown. Presently, Georgetown's in a 1-2-2 or a 1-3 zone. Hancock pushing off foul, his second. And Missouri will play it on the baseline. Coach Thompson does not worry about fouls because he has multiple substitutions. He'd go all the way back to his 10th man. And he's got those two high school All-American forwards on the bench in Jones and Martin. Frazier got Ewing off balance and Sunbold saves for Missouri. Played a little over a minute. Prince Bridges not there. And the fouls on Stepanovich for pushing off his fourth. It's inside his left arm. He seems to keep low. And with the left arm, he, he seems to push a little bit. Let's see if we catch it on this replay. Now watch his left arm. See him pushing there, that's his right arm. See him push off. But I don't know if that, I personally wouldn't have called that a foul. I think that both were pushing. That was a tough call. Norm Stewart's big center down, one foul left. He stays in the game. Oh yeah, you gotta leave him play now. That's all she wrote. Eric Smith hits, even though he's playing on a bad ankle, didn't practice the last two days, and you can see him favor it. It hasn't uh, hampered his shooting talent. This is the biggest lead of the game for Georgetown, 10 points. Missouri led twice early by a bucket. See, they, they don't put Ewing under the basket. They put him on the foul line, and they keep Hancock under the basket. Frazier draws the crowd again, double team. Every time he sees the ball, you're going to see three or four guys on him. Nice move by McCrary, and he's way off the mark. Hancock to Floyd. Oh. Ewing. Stepanovich, nice block. block. And Hancock scores, and he's fouled by McCurry. There's a lot of pushing and shoving out there here, and a lot of action. This shot does not go in. It's the next shot, it comes out a little bit here. Now watch Moon McCurry reach in. There's Moon right there, reaches in, touches him on the wrist. Hancock with a shot at a three-point play as he looks for his fifth point of the game. I think the fire commissioner's on vacation. Short, and Frazier collects another rebound. Twelve points. The deficit facing Missouri, beaten once all season long. The Tigers, a brilliant season, 23-1, and the Big 8 champions. I 
as you fall behind against the zone, it gets stronger because they drop more into the paint. It becomes a pocket zone. They're now in a 1-3-1. You're going to have to take the shot to the outside. That's it. Sunbold very short and a foul. Hancock pushing off. That's his third, the first Georgetown player with three. A lot of shoving inside. Yeah, well, uh, especially with Sapanovich inside here. There's Hancock, just put the elbow there. Now here they're both on Sapanovich on both sides. And there's the foul on Fraser. Hancock just that time pushed off on him. Ed Spriggs is in, and Hancock goes out of the Georgetown lineup. So uh, muscular Spriggs even adds to the height and girth of this uh, my Georgetown team. Frazier over Ewing. Oh, what a shot. Ricky Frazier now has 13. So shooting in traffic. That was the first points of the second half for Missouri. Floyd, tough luck. Frazier rebounds, and Ewing pushing off. Now Ewing trying to draw the fifth foul from Stepanovich. Uh, he has to be careful that he doesn't give away a couple quick ones himself. See what I believe, when a man has four fouls, I don't want him to foul out if he's playing against me. I'd rather leave the Panovich in there, because every time I touch the ball offensively, he's not going to guard me. Sunbold, that's interesting thinking. Sunbold way short. Ewing gets it for Georgetown. Sunbold got hung in the air that time, had no place to put it, so he shot it up. This should be good. Sleepy boy makes it 37. The 10th time in 120 games, he's been a double figure. Mr. Consistency, Eric Sleepy Floyd from Gastonia, North Carolina. Missouri has to realize that Georgetown takes no prisoners. They show no mercy. If they can beat you by 50, they'll beat you by 50. Floyd gets the rebound of Frazier's missed shot. Ewing. Push off with the left arm, cleared away. Yeah, but no one listens to a freshman anyway. <laughs> <laughs> they will someday, Patrick. <laughs> they're starting to hear. Maybe not listening, but they're hearing and hey, seeing. Hey, Patrick, imitate Coach Thompson. You got your security blanket, too. The towel man, not a bad man to imitate. Frazier to shoot a pair. 14 points. He put his, puts as much uh, art on his uh, shot as a uh, Anyone in college basketball on his free throw. Look how high Boston hits a pair. It's 39 27. Frazier is 14th and 15th points of the game. Timeout. Only four and a half minutes gone in the second half, but Georgetown leads by a dozen. Before I swing for the bleacher CDs, I get the EDs for my Wheaties. Before I slam my gorilla donkeys, I get the Eaties for my Wheaties. The Eaties for Wheaties. That undeniable, irresistible urge for the crispy, crunchy, whole wheat taste of the breakfast of champions. Before I put on my little cleaties, I get the Eaties for my Wheaties. Part of your good breakfast. At Ford Motor Company, quality is job one. Putting a door on is very important. It's as important as getting the foundation of a house straight. If you don't start off right, you can't finish right. Any door sounds good, you close it that hard. You close them like that without having to slam it, you know you got a good door. Here's to good friends, tonight is kind of special.
So long, fellas. Hey, Jim, how you doing? I'm hot, cold, uh, thirsty. Call me a cab. Ten minutes, I have you back at the lodge. I can't make it. Ten minutes, I have you back at the lodge drinking a lawn brown. I can make it. When you want the taste of a truly great American beer, tonight, let it be low and brown. Where would I be without you guys? Probably still out there in the snow somewhere. Hoyas 39, the Tigers 27. You're the uh, nickname expert. What is a Hoya? A Hoya is a Hoosier that left Indiana. <laughs> they say Hoya. <laughs> now, the Hoyas, boy, that is a, uh, what's that? Uh, originally came out of Hoya Saxa, what rocks, referring to a Georgetown team called the Stonewalls. They dropped for whatever reason the Saxa took on the Hoyas, which, which really literally means uh, uh, what is or what up. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful, Dick. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I'm leaving that up to you. <laughs> this is unbelievable. Missouri had 12 turnovers the first half. One of the big assets, they don't turn the ball over. Martin can't hit the Panovich rebounds. Down by 12. Walker in the game with the ball. He's the, he's the man that has to get going. During that commercial, I was talking to Dick, and I says, Walker must get going. He missed a couple of chippies the first half. He's a powerful type guy. They give him the ball close to the basket. I think he can score. And Walker has scored his first points of the game. Georgetown's lead reduced to 10. Five minutes gone, second half. Boy. Frazier, a nice move on Floyd, just scored from the baseline. Perfect uh, body control while he's up in the air. He goes straight up, doesn't he? Ten points, Spriggs backing in against Kapanovic. And that's going to be against Spriggs for charging. It appeared to be a good call. I thought it was a good call. I thought he hit him earlier, before the second one. I think they're looking, trying to file out Kapanovic too much. Leave him in there. Now watch the first bump he gives him. There's the first bump. Now he turns around for the second bump, jumping into him. That is illegal. Zapanovich is just holding his ground. Good call by the official. Missouri with a basket, but get with an eight, but there's a turnover as the press boils Norm Stewart's Tigers again. Norm Stewart knows he has a lot of time. He's being patient. Laws and don't lose control here. Laws and don't go playground. Kavanaugh in the game for Missouri, so Stewart has both of his big men in at the same time. And a foul on Walker of Missouri. His first. Kind of a foolish foul. That should be a two-shot foul. John Sunbold comes back into the game, and Walker goes out. Sunbold, the number two scorer for the Tigers, 12 points a game. At the line, Fred Brown from the Bronx, New York, a sophomore. He was rookie of the year in the Big East last season when he averaged seven and a half a game. He's under five points a game this year, but with Ewing there and so much scoring talent, Brown basically a defensive player and rebounder. But what he has, he has the whole package, but he's a little soft from the outside. He has to work on his outside primitive shot. He should do a lot of that in the summertime. But when he, gets, when he picks that up, he'll have the whole package. Ewing is back in. Brown uh, led the team in assists last year, and again, as a sophomore, is the leading assist man for Thompson this year. Rebound. Sapanovich had it knocked away by Kavanaugh. Out of bounds. Another turnover. I don't, know, I don't know if they'd count that as a turnover, Dick. I don't know if they had control, but everything seems to be going Georgetown's way. 41-31 on the scoreboard to the Hoyas. 14 minutes remaining. Ewing wants that ball inside. Eric Smith forced the shot. Ewing. But Georgetown gets it back. Seems to be happening. Once they seem to have a nose for the ball, the five of them are all good athletes underneath there. They go for the uh, for the rebound. Floyd. Boy, oh, he's hit three in a row. Nothing but twine. 43-31. Floyd now with 14. Fraser, look, three men draw in on Fraser. Every time he touches the ball, they come around them. And the foul is against. Either Smith or Spriggs. 32, Eric Smith, his second. 
non shooting foul. That's the 15 foul and 16 foul. Six now on Georgetown. Missouri with only three. So again, the foul situation in favor, team fouls of Missouri, although Stepanovich with four. That's a different situation. Sun Bull has to bottom a few out from outside. Bring it around to the side of the court. Let it fly. Now, of course, the ball is in. And that pass by Kavaner. Eric Smith over Kavaner. Shorts down by 14. 13 minutes left. Another turnover. Smith to Floyd. They're going crazy. Boy, they're raking. They're raking every time down with a man in the middle with the ball. I really think the whistle is slow. But Missouri has to adjust to a whistle. The first thing a coach has to do is find out whether it's a fast whistle or a slow whistle. Today's game is obviously a slow whistle. He goes sleepy, keeps his head up nice and smooth, just like a feather, little finger roll in there. Eric Smith with his third foul goes out, and the freshman Anthony Jones from Dunbar High School here in the district area is in. At the line is Kavanaugh. It's good and bad things here, Dick. And Missouri has enough time to get back into the ball game. But if, they, if they're allowed to keep going, they'll beat them by drifting. That's the style that Coach Thompson uses. Missouri not playing well at all in the second half. They scored only eight points to 18 for Georgetown. Boy, not in, not there, but Ewing saves out the bridges. No advantage. One against two. He takes it in anyway and misses again. Give credit to Pat Ewing that time, man, if we clock his shot. Missouri has to slow the tempo down. Got to. We can't play that game. That's what they've been doing. And these Hoya fans are really enjoying it. There's a rare turnover by Georgetown. Now watch Pat Ewing on this replay here. Watch him intimidate. He rolls up and down the court. See the fellow we clock in Pat Ewing. He had to shoot on the way down. Good shot. Good camera work. Gonzalez, our director, Ken Edmondson, our producer, timeout, 12 minutes left. Georgetown by 16. It's a car. It's a truck. It drives like a car. It hauls like a truck. It's a Rampage. America's first sports pickup. Front wheel drive, rack and pinion steering, electronically controlled engine, exceptional mileage, and the bonus of a double-walled all-steel cargo area that hauls over half a ton. You can go on a Rampage for just $66.98. Come in and order it now. It's a car. It's a truck. It's, it's a, a Rampage. A whole new kind of driving machine. Mr. Copa? Yes. I'm your Bell System Yellow Pages representative. I'm here to help you. Well, I'm in the book. What more can I say? The Bell System Yellow Pages can do the talking for you. You know, the food is great. Uh, Mama does all the cooking. Well, say it. I said it. Say it here in the Yellow Pages, where four out of five people let their fingers do the walking. Mama, she's here to help us. Really? <laughs> Give him my name for Get the Yellow Pages talking. Mama does all the cooking. Let your fingers do the walking. The brightest prospects in the middleweight division. Power puncher Dwight Davison battles European champion Tony Simpson. Then, from West Germany, see the historic performances of Phil and Steve Mayer in World Cup slalom skiing, plus World Pro figure skating, tomorrow on NBC Sports World. Doubleheader day, college basketball on NBC. Stay tuned, coming up here in the East, Boston College and St. John. Boston College beat Georgetown earlier this week. Other games, Tennessee, LSU, and the SEC, Indiana, Purdue, and the Big Ten coming up after this contest. It'll be Texas A&M and Texas, a battle for the bragging rights of the grand state of Texas, Kansas State and Kansas. Another rivalry, Hawaii, UT, UTEP, Stanford, UCLA later at 3 o'clock. Eastern time, West Coast time, and University of Alabama, Birmingham, Virginia Commonwealth. All those games to follow, so stay tuned. Here, Georgetown with a big 16-point lead against Missouri. Missouri, a team that has not lost on the road all year. They're 12-0. Sunbold, they just can't buy a basket. Frazier, taken away. That was Martin, the freshman, who stole the ball. Gene Smith, Anthony Jones. 
Okay, Missouri, get your head up now. Be patient. A little bit slower play. You're going too fast. You're in the one and one. They should get a lot of fouls now. Stepanovich. Oh, nice left-handed shot by Stepanovich. That's only his fourth point, the first point to the second half. 11 02 remaining. Jones, the freshman. Rebounds to Panovich. Sunbold. Oh, that's a tough shot on the run. They're forcing. No, you can't get back into the game with that type of a shot. I think the crowd got a bananas. Jones, he was fouled. And who was it? To Panovich is all she wrote. Curtains. It is to Panovich. He has fouled out. One field goal and two free throws. Yeah, you watch. He goes up in the air now and shakes and bakes a little bit, draws the foul, tries to come in the back door. Good body control by Jones, an outstanding freshman. And then the other team, he'd get national recognition. But because of Pat Ewing being a freshman with him, he doesn't get much credit. Jones with Stepanovich on the Pines. Jones has averaged seven and a half points a game as a substitute. Great talent, good shooter. This is that free throw. He was the D.C. Player of the Year, led his Dunbar team to 24 straight victories last year, averaging 24 points a game as a senior. Misses the two free throws. McCrary rebounds for Missouri. All right, we need a basket here now, Missouri. Just take your time. Get over to Sunbolt. Start hurting Georgetown now. If Missouri can make the foul, they'll close the gap. I think they'll play better now that uh, Stepanovich is out, only because Stepanovich had to play so long with four fouls, and he was kind of cat and mouse in it. He wasn't coming on strong. All right, let me ask you this, Coach. It's 49-33 Georgetown. Let's say these two teams played on a neutral side. Eric Smith coming back in. Not at Columbia, not at Georgetown. Which would you say right now is the better team? Uh, the tempo decided the better team in this game. Uh, Missouri had to decide to play a half-court game. They had it with their material, and Georgetown wanted to play a 94-foot game. And for some reason, the whole game was played over 94 feet. I, I also think that psychologically, Missouri might have been upset about coming into this confessional box. But you got to take that out of your mind when you have to play the ball game. Well, but they knew it was scheduled here a year ago, and it's not as if that was a surprise. Well, that was the, if it was, it was a mistake thing. Well, the Capitol Center wasn't available, and uh, that from the very start of the year, they knew this game was going to be in this arena. Sunball off the block shot. Here comes Missouri down by 16. See, what happens to a lot of coaches, they psych themselves out in the road and things don't go their way. I'm not saying Norm Stewart's a good coach. He's won 12 in a row in a row. But I think coming into here, this is the early 1950s, this type of gym. They got the stage on one end. You know, it's just a year. Lone Ranger, the Green Hornet, the Beatle. Tom X. Hop along Cassidy. Sasparella, two cent play. Lloyd, not there, and Frazier, who has eight rebounds, leading the Tigers. He's played a superb game, Ricky Frazier. They get back in this ball game. They're just patient. They've got it down to 14. There's one thing about a running club. You're always in the ball game. As long as they'll pull you out completely, they'll come back to you. Inside to Frazier over Ewing. Oh, he has challenged Ewing all day. Ricky Frazier, the leading scorer with 19. I told you earlier, with Sapanovich out, that they might make a good move here. I think Dressler has to come in, too, to start them going. And indeed, John Thompson has called timeout. To reiterate your point earlier, that a man in foul trouble with four who stays in, you wanted that man to stay in against you because he wouldn't play defense. Yeah, he kind of uh, babies it out there. Let and you have all you can eat. <laughs> Pipe beer from Miller tastes just great, and that's no fish story. But the best thing is, it's less filling. Light's got a third less calories than their regular beer, and that's important when you're trying to land that big one. Like yesterday, I hooked this bass, fought it for over six hours. All of a sudden, 
he jumps clean over the boat. Broke my rod, and I had to tie the... Now, wait a minute, fellas. I had to tie the Light line Light beer from down. Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Left me out there with nothing but a paddle. This is the Xerox 2350, the desktop copier that reduces. It can make handy 8.5 by 11-inch copies from all my clumsy oversized originals, including computer printouts, technical drawings, and blue ledger sheets. The 2350 can even do something I've always wanted to do. It can take my size 14 sneakers and reduce them to an eight and a half. To find out more, call Xerox at 800-648-5888. The beat of great college basketball continues as explosive Wichita State tries to tame the Tigers of LSU. Then on NBC Sports World, Dwight Davis battles European champion Tony Simpson, plus thrilling World Cup slalom skiing and great figure skating tomorrow. One of the great universities in this country, Georgetown, uh, John Thompson, when he came here as the head coach 10 years ago, he inherited a 3-23 and 23 team, and he has built a power, and this is a young team with so much talent, we're going to be talking a lot about the Hoyas in the next several years. Thompson, of course, a great player himself at Providence and was the backup center with the Boston Celtics. Backed up Bill Russell. Georgetown's lead once 18 down to 12 on six unanswered points right away Thompson calls a timeout you think the losing coach would call a timeout now and then but the winning coach if he starts to see momentum changing bang quick timeout now if Missouri can get a turn over here we might have a different game Ed Spriggs and Pat Ewing the two big men in the game for Georgetown along with Eric Smith Floyd and Brown and the ball again to Ewing. There you are. Over Kavaner. He's short. Spriggs gets the rebound and saves it to Floyd. Sleepy Floyd short. Boy, Georgetown has had so many breaks on loose balls. And no foul. And hopefully no one injured. There were some grimaces down on the floor as they scrambled for that one. Looked like a rugby match down there. It, it just seems that Georgetown is quicker. And it's Missouri. going to be Missouri's ball on the alternate possession. That's, that's right. That's the way the arrow's pointing. The Indians said go that way. <laughs> Your favorite rule. The season started off badly for you with that alternate possession. Norm Stewart's club could get within 10. We're getting to with eight minutes plus left. You like to get that single digit difference. It's a smaller Missouri team against uh, a very big Georgetown club on the floor. Sunbold inside to McCrary. Good patience now by the Tigers. Sunbold, get him right now. Let it go. Now I go to That was a little bit too rough. He Spriggs. put Fraser to the floor. That was a body check. He <laughs> took him right into the boards. What he did with his elbow, he just swept him out of there. That's two minutes, maybe, in hockey. <laughs> two minutes? I think it'd be, I think it'd be a, a period. Watch, watch Spriggs clear him out of there now. Right, right now with his inside elbow. Whoop, there you go. <laughs> he must have thought he was his brother. <laughs> and Spriggs. Gets the foul, and Ricky Frazier has his 22nd point. He leads all scores. He's a bona fide All-American. Yep. Misses the free throw. He didn't miss many, and it's 11-point lead for Georgetown. Brown forces the shot, but it comes oh, out to Floyd. Yeah, they're just too quick for, for Georgetown, I mean for Missouri. 
many times on the second shot on a rebound. The ball's loose, and Georgetown seems to get every one. A little luck involved in there, too. Brown misses. Brown gets it back. And a foul. Kavanaugh, his second. Substitutions have kind of wore out Missouri. Thompson has been throwing them in every couple of minutes. Missouri doesn't go as deep as Georgetown. Missouri only goes to the eighth man. Here comes Michael Walker. You felt he was the key earlier in this yep. half. Scored a bucket then was taken out. Yeah, I, I think Michael Walker has the body to compete underneath there. I wonder why Dressler hasn't been back in the ball game. Dressler seated next to Norm Stewart may be coming in soon. Fred in town Brown, not related to Fred downtown. Well, in the I, ranks. I think Dressler. Fred is more midtown, you know, as far as the shot. When everybody says downtown, you think of a uh, you know, 25 foot. He's more 16, 15. Number 24, Dressler back in for the Tigers. Cavender rebounds, and it's 52 40, Georgetown. Six and a half minutes left. Cavender is fouled. Uh, Ewing has his fourth. So Pat Ewing with four. No, they, Brown is now raising his hand. So is Floyd. They're trying to get it off the chart of Pat Ewing. So we'll double check against whom the foul was called. No, now they give That's it surprising. to Sleepy Floyd. It's not on Ewing. The scoreboard at least has it chalked up to Floyd his second. One and one for Kavanaugh who missed the front end of one and one and misses again. So a 76% free throw shooting team having their troubles there too today. Brown. And again, a second chance and a foul. Once again, Georgetown getting second and third chances on the offensive end. They just out muscle them in there. Their strength to start the show. Foul on Dressler. Missouri brings in number 44 for the first time Ron Jones 6 4 sophomore from Cape Girardeau Missouri Spriggs big man at the line great basketball games the fouls the Panovich fouled out earlier in the second half set out much of the first half three early fouls come on, come on. Boston College, St. John's, Tennessee, LSU, Indiana, Purdue, Texas against the Yankees, K-State, Kansas, Hawaii, UTEP, Stanford, UCLA. That's a 3 o'clock game on the West Coast. Alabama, Birmingham, Virginia, Commonwealth. All to follow on NBC. Check that. It's 12 noon for UCLA. 12 noon on the West Coast. And the constant pressure. All the time pressure. Now they'll settle back into their zone. Okay, now they'll settle in. Make the score from the outside. Dressler to Jones. And he hits his first shot. Ron Jones cuts Georgetown's lead to 12. All right, Missouri, you gotta get more aggressive defensively. You gotta pick them up early. Look like they're gonna try to pinch now, Missouri. Georgetown trying to ice it a bit now with that sizable lead as we approach the five minute mark. Dressler slapping foul against Brown, his third. Dressler's third foul. It's one in the bonus, I believe. And the next jump ball possession goes to Georgetown. Red Brown at the line. Georgetown had just steadily pulled away, built their lead to eight at the half, to 18 early in the second half. Missouri has carved into it a bit, but it's still 12 points up for Georgetown. Brown, 62% free throw shooter. It's a pair, and it's 54-40. And they'll settle back right now into their zone. Play man-to-man, -man, whoever has the ball. 
obviously the big guy in the middle there in the paint. Frazier fouled Eric Smith reaching in his fourth foul. One of the big problems, Dick, here is that Missouri is not making Georgetown pay the penalty for the foul. They're missing their shots on the one-to-one. -one. And you would have thought at the start, statistically, that Missouri had evidence that would indicate they would hurt you at the free throw line. Frazier is four for six. Watch, his shot goes right out of the picture. Well, that's one of the great sounds for a basketball player, isn't it? That clean hit of the basket through the net. You know what a ball player knows. When the ball leaves his hands, he knows if it's going in. Two for Frazier to add to his game-high total. 24 now for Ricky Frazier. And it's a 12-point Georgetown lead with 4.50 left. Good. Dressler's picking up early, which is a good move. Create more play. Everyone has to play up. Walker on Floyd. Ewing helping out. Floyd. Kavanagh rebound. That's one of the few that Missouri's been able to collect, and it almost escaped Kavanagh. Walker outside, Dressler, he can hit from there. Whistle, no shot would not have counted. The foul is against Ron Jones pushing Missouri away from the ball. They just won't let Missouri get inside. They just won't let them inside around that basket. You know, it's been a long time since the big man has dominated in the tournament. And if Georgetown is successful, Ewing could be a mighty force this year as Ralph Sampson would be for Virginia. I still don't think he's mature enough yet to, to govern an NCAA tournament. We've got to go five, six games. Timeout, 12-point lead for Georgetown. Why is our copier smarter than theirs? Compare the Savin 883 on my left with the Xerox 4000 on my right. You'll find that only one has a microprocessor and an electronic brain that can transform an unclear original into a clear copy. Only one has a fully automatic document feed and only one has an energy-saving automatic shutoff. On all these points, one copier outsmarts the other. The Savin. In 1931, Texaco developed a new gasoline for emergency vehicles called Fire Chief. Not just for fire engines, but family cars, too. In 1941, Texaco helped create a fuel refining process for the national defense. For tomorrow, Texaco is working on a way of turning America's plentiful coal into clean burning gas. These are some of the ways Texaco is making good use of America's energy resources. More exciting college hoops are coming your way. First, St. John's takes on Boston College, while the Fighting Tigers of LSU battle Tennessee. Plus, Bobby Knight's Indiana Hoosiers clash with Purdue, while the Bruins of UCLA meet Stafford. All coming up next, check local listings. That matchup between Stepanovich and Ewing, of course, the influence is the bottom line. Stepanovich saddled with the early fouls and the fourth one early in the second half, and Ewing having the better of it, but that really isn't the key to the game, those statistics. No, the key to the game really was, was the tempo set of the game early, and to have statistics against one aircraft carrier against the other, you have to have maybe five or six meetings. The other matchup we talked about was uh, the scoring leaders, Floyd and Frazier, and both have contributed. Frazier with 24, and Floyd with 16. Yeah, they're both going to go high in the first round of the NBA draft. They're both ball players that do not need an offense to get their shot. They're the type of player that takes you to the final four. They They're can not score with any team. Any team may score against any club. I, I think there's been a greater defense around Frazier than there has been around Floyd. Brown's miss gives Missouri's faint hopes uh, another chance. They're down by 12, four minutes left. The Tigers who celebrated the Big A championship earlier in the week and have not lost all year on the road. A remarkable 12-0 record coming into this one. All around Fraser, as soon as he touches the ball, they all come around him. Oh, Sunbold with a good save. Just beat the half-court turnover. Bridges, that's his first basket. Missouri has three starters who have only one basket each. McCrary, Stepanovich, and now Bridges. 2-1-2, two, two, don't press. Now they'll go man to man. Normally a team that presses doesn't like to be pressed. That's an interesting point. Yep. Oh, he's in the paint too long. 
Brown dishes back out. Ewing was in there a long time. Yeah, he didn't get caught. He was um, setting up house. We got ourselves a 10-point game. They need a turnover someplace along here. Floyd got away with a push off that time on Prince Bridges. You can't let those big men pop out for the safety valve release. They can't allow that. Georgetown will take the game right out. Less than three minutes left. Georgetown by 10. The Hoyas trying to improve on their number 14 ranking against fourth rated Missouri. Missouri, one of only four teams in the country with Wait. only one loss. Raise is quick. Oh, and Ewing and oh, no. on either way. It goes oh. against Missouri. Kavanagh gets the foul. Wow, that uh, might have been, I might have been uh, angled out of it. But if we can see this again, let, let you call the shot. Well, it looks like I, Ewing made the contact. Well, I, you know, let's see it once more if we possibly can. I, it, it's a close call, but it was such an important part of the game for them to get only down 10 points. And now Missouri's other big man has four fouls. Stepanovich has already been disqualified with five. He has nice form, doesn't he, for a big man? He's going to be a—he is going to be a big offensive player. Here's another angle on that last call. See, he's in front of Pat Ewing. He's allowed to go for the ball like that, in my opinion. Well, you saw it from the official's position, and he's the one who called the foul. Yep. Ewing hits both. Those are his first points of the second half. 13 in the game. 58-46. Now they'll be very passive. They won't be as aggressive in this pressure. Now watch. They'll be very passive. They'll keep backing up, keep backing up. Now they'll settle in. Just settle in back there. Let you have the outside shot. Sun Bowl. Not there. See, they're too quick. They get to the ball ahead of the Missouri guy. They're getting out of the blocks faster. I still say playing in this gym is a problem. I, I think this gym is worth at least 12 points. Well, that's the lead. Ewing with a save, and Brown passed up a layup. That was a good play. He didn't quite know where he was. He was right under the basket. And rather than force a shot and miss it, he took it back out. As we said so many times, Dick, the clock is the opponent now, not the uh, not Missouri. Not they have that final in. Excuse me, Coach, and I know a lot of fans have been waiting for number one ranked Virginia down at the half by four against North Carolina State. The final is in. Virginia 45, North Carolina State 40. So the I Cavaliers. Said, as I said, Ralph Stick, Lee Sampson plays the second half. In the first half, he's very unselfish. And the book on Ralph is not to cover him the first half because he passes the ball all the time. Then the second half, try to put pressure on him. Eric Smith, boy, Rick Berman's uh, sound equipment. Let's just listen if uh, Smith hits this one. No, he didn't. That one fellow wasn't watching the game. He was uh, reading over there. Prince Bridges. <laughs> wow, did, did, did Ewing go up that time? Even though he didn't catch the ball. Again, that ball bouncing around, and Georgetown is able to come up with it. 59-46 with a minute and a half left. That's all she wrote. Fans know they have it. Georgetown will be jumping tonight. And in Columbia, Missouri, I'm sure the University of Missouri faithful said, oh, would we love to get you to play at our place and see what happens. Well, the only place in the Big Eight like this is Oklahoma State. They call it Gallagher Arena. But that holds about 6,000, which is really 2,000 more than here. And Missouri won there a week ago. Well, the mother state is going to have to regroup, and uh, they'll be tough. they got the components to go all the way this year. This is just one of those things. I really think they might have psyched themselves out early in the game coming into the, this field out here. This used to be called a gym until Georgetown went Park Avenue uptown. Now they call it Marina. <laughs> In the semantics, that's interesting. It is on the outside labeled McDonough Gym, but but with Georgetown a winning club, it is McDonough Arena now in all their notes. Brown hits Wichita State LSU. The coach and I will be down in Baton Rouge. Oh, land of that good crawfish. That'll be tomorrow here on NBC.
NBC, 1 o'clock Eastern time, and we'll see some great big men in that game. You'll see the best bookend bones in the country, Antoine Carr and Livingston. Ewing, the ball was short, so that was not goal trimming. Well, here comes a dunk shot probably for Ewing. I told you! Oh, goal I mean, no, sure. I mean, not goaltending, but he actually grabbed the oh, rim. Yeah. That should be a technical foul. He almost it ripped was. it. I could see it coming. Watch there the is. rim bend. Watch yep. the rim bend. I'm surprised the basket didn't come down. Woo. Oh, that was near a shatter job. Here we go again. You can see it coming. He got his arm up there, his big wing up there. There's the albatross. Woo. <laughs> if the ball had been on the rim, he'd have flipped it into the ceiling. Woo. Uh, great Boy. shot. <laughs> great work by the cameraman. Here we go again. Four different angles, only on NBC, proud as a peacock. <laughs> Shot made by Michael Walker on the technical. Missouri's ball, 61-47. You know, I've got to share this with our audience. The coach wanted me to show the 215-pound give on that rim, wanted me to hang on the rim to show it. And the way it springs back into shape, I'm not sure I want to be on that. you would be the next astronaut. <laughs> <laughs> Georgetown cuts, lead is cut to 61-49 by Kavanagh, his first bucket. Turnover, Walker scores. So that a little bit of cosmetic points makes it 61-51, 10 seconds left. Both teams going to be in the NCAA, Dick. And a foul in the backcourt of Levon Jones of Missouri. Well, the boy has had it really all the way. Norm Stewart's team, and not to alibi for the Tigers, but from his point of view, they played Thursday night at Oklahoma, traveled in, played in the small gymnasium, did not work out here last night. They'd already clinched the Big Eight championship. Has to be a little emotional let down there, don't you think? If you caught that picture with George Thompson, really, Coach Thompson and his ball players truly have a love affair. It's a family concept. He, he's like a father image to it. The MVP of this game, I would say, would be the guy that's kind of tall. Pat Ewing is our Honeywell MVP. Congratulations. A plaque in his honor. $1,000 to Georgetown. $1,000 to Missouri. We have a Honeywell. Two seconds. One second. It's over. Georgetown has upset Missouri. Volkswagen introduces the amazing new Quantum, German technology that is bound to be copied. Other makers will scrutinize Quantum's patented thinking axle, hoping to unlock the secret to its agility. They'll analyze Quantum's aerodynamics, seeking a clue to its economy. They'll even burrow into Quantum's comfortable interior. Five years from now, how will you tell the original from a copy? Look right here. This bud's for everyone who's in the groove. It's five minutes on the upswing of five. Outside is 87 degrees under sunny blue skies. Stay tuned for my man Flash. I'm moving out of here, having myself an ice cold brew. Yeah, just for you, that distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. All you do. More exciting college hoops are coming your way. First, St. John's takes on Boston College, while the Fighting Tigers of LSU battle Tennessee. Plus, Bobby Knight's Indiana Hoosiers clash with Purdue, while the Bruins of UCLA meet Stanford. All coming up next. Check local listings. Final score, 63-51. Georgetown, the most valuable player, the freshman center, 7-foot Pat Ewing. 13 points, 12 rebounds, two block shots, and many intimidations. Even the rim was uh, intimidated. <laughs> up, up, and away. <laughs> Matter of fact, he thought he might have broke the backboard in that, Dick. He looked up. Tomorrow on NBC, a great sports world show. 
This is Marv Albert from Birmingham, England, the site of a scheduled live 12-round middleweight bout. Tony Simpson, the European champion from Great Britain, will enter the ring against Detroit's Dwight Davison, the number one contender. Now, we'll also be bringing you the exciting Albert Kandahar Slalom from West Germany. Twin brothers Steve and Phil Mayer taking on the best in World Cup skiing. From our nation's capital, the finest skaters in the world perform, including Olympic champions Robin Cousins of Great Britain and America's Dorothy Hamill. Also, an edition of Sports Journal. That's all tomorrow on NBC Sports World. But now, back to McDonough Gym at Georgetown University in Washington, D.C. And a reminder that Al and I will be on hand with the Wichita State LSU game before Sports World. Terry Eward and Jeff Mason won an Emmy for that Arlboro Kandahar coverage last year. It should be great along with the skating and the live boxing. Dick Emberg, Al McGuire, Steve Dance, a statistician. Final score, 63-51. The executive producer of NBC Basketball is Don Olmeyer. Coordinating producer, George Finkel. Today's game was produced by Kenneth Roy Edmondson. Directed by John Gonzalez. Feature producer, Ramon Plaza. Technical director, Lenny Stucker. And associate director, John Libretto. Don't forget tomorrow, more exciting college basketball. Live beginning at 1 o'clock, the Shockers of Wichita State and the LSU Tigers. Followed by NBC Sports. World, Dwight Davison, Tony Simpson from England, live, 12 round middleweight, and boxing along with downhill skiing and figure skating. Now stay tuned for more exciting college basketball here on NBC. At Georgetown today, it was the Hoya 63 and Missouri 51. A promotional fee has been paid to NBC by United Airlines. We serve more of this land's top 100 business centers than any other airline. Fly the friendly skies. Monday, members of the original cast reunite for a wedding on Walton's Mountain. But when Erin's ex-boyfriend returns... Did he ever make you feel like that? Her wedding plans may be shattered. 